Islam Moors, all meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the circle seven and love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. I want to ask that everyone who was able to please rise and face the east as we recite the Moorish American prayer. Standing, facing the east. Okay, uh, standing facing the east with our heels together, feet at a 45 degree angle, holding up two fingers on the right and five on the left. Please repeat after me Allah, the Father of the Universe, universe. the Father of Love, uh, Truth, truth. Peace. Freedom and justice. Allah's my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day, through his holy prophet, Drew Ali. Amen. Islam, peace and love, Moors. I want to announce this meeting is now open. This is the Moore Science Temple of America, Temple 30, Columbus, Ohio. First and foremost, we always rise, giving the highest of praise to the Most High, our Father God, Allah. We extend honors to our divine prophet, Noble Drew Ali, for bringing us our divine creed and nationality. And we extend honors to the forerunner to the prophet, Brother Marcus Mosiah Garvey. We also extend honors to the Moorish and the American flags. And we extend honors to the Charter and his Ten Wonders. We extend honors also to the first appointed Supreme Grand Sheikh appointed by the Prophet Brother E. Millie Ill, and we extend honors to all members of the Morris Science Temple of America, all the faithful, and we extend honors to the current Supreme Grand Sheikh Brother Ken Umar Bay, and we extend honors also to the Supreme Grand Council of the Morris Science Temple of America. Islam Morris. All right, Brother Jackson Bay, if you will are able to please read our divine constitution and bylaws. Islam Grand Sheikh, I have given all praise to Allah, the Prophet, Rally, forefather, and former AGF Mason. Salvation of life, community, where he be in a worse area. The grand she can chairman of the more science temple of America, and power to make more of a full slow with this profit and by him. Islam, brother. Islam, brother, you're breaking up really bad. It's breaking up real bad, brother. I do want to do the recording. Islam, yeah, if, if, is your connection not good? Uh, that, that's not. Okay, yeah. No problem, brother. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. I have it. Okay. Islam, gratitude, brother. Salvation, the lie, unity, the more science temple of America, the divine constitution and bylaws. <clears throat> Act one, the grand sheik and the chairman of the more science temple of America is empowered to make law and enforce laws with the assistance of the prophet in the grand body of the more science temple of America. The assistant grand sheik is to assist the grand sheik in all affairs. If he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, 
and it is known before the members of the Moore Science Temple of America. Act 2, all members, all meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the Circle 7 in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Friday is our holy day of rest because on a Friday, the first man was formed in flesh, and on a Friday, the first man departed out of flesh and ascended unto his father, God Allah. For that cause, Friday is the holy day for all Muslims all over the world. Act 3, love, truth, peace. Freedom and justice must be proclaimed and practiced by all members of the Morris Science Temple of America. No member is to put in danger or accuse falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all that may harm his brother or sister because of lies love. Act for all members must preserve these holy and divine laws, and all members must obey the laws of the government because by being a Moorish American, you are a part and a partial of the government and must live the life accordingly. Act 5, this organization of the Morris Science Temple of America is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government, but to obey hereby. Act 6, with us all members must proclaim their nationality, and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed, that they may know that they are a part and partial of this said government, and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians, because... These names were given to, given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. <clears throat> but this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national names to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why a lot of great God of the universe ordained noble Drew Ali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites, whom inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Act 7, all members must promptly attend their meetings and become a part and a partial of all uplifting acts of the Moore Science Temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moore Science Temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become a part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Drew Ali. Through the guidance of his father, God Allah, Noble Drew Ali, founder, Moorish American prayer. Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet, Drew Ali. Amen. The Morris Science Temple of America, home office of Noble Drew Ali, home office, Chicago, Illinois, U.S.A. Islam Morris. Uh, Brother Kobe, would you please read our writs? Islam, Grand Sheik, I rise to give praise to the great God Allah, rise to give honor to the prophet, noble Drew Ali, rise to give honor to the forerunner, Marcus Messiah, Garby, the harbinger, rise to give honor to all ills and bays, rise to give honor to our charter, our supreme Grand Sheik, all monsters on the planet on the call. To be proclaimed in every meeting, Islam, I am glad to know I have a few faithful more among you all, and I desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth. There's a host of jealousy about me and the movement now by the same people of our side of the nation that claimed that I was a joke and unreal. But now since they found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Ajax must depend upon for their earthly salvation as American citizens, they are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they may take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful more that attribute to the movement and uplifting funds. The ones that pay the divine respect to me and the movement will be remembered. That is why I'm calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet, and your divine Moors movement. I need finance and I need it badly. Next, I need it financed so badly as I do at present so I can shove aside the discord that is facing the nation. It all comes to jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The world will not recognize the movement without I, the prophet, being head. It has been proven by my work, which I have performed in the past few years. Prophet, Noble Drew Ali. To the members of the Morris Science Temple of America, Islam, this is instruction from the Prophet Noble Drew Ali. Be faithful unto your forefather, divine and national creed, that you will be blessed for your good deeds that you saw in the flesh. Allah is the one that judges the world, and his judgment is on now, but the weak can comprehend it not. 
The end of times are drawing near, so says Allah to his divine prophet, I know but do Ali. And that is why many hearts have turned to stone. Many have eyes to see but cannot see, ears to hear but cannot hear. At least they'll be confined of their sins. These are the trying hours, my dear Lord. And every evil spirit is moving, and they are trying every weak mind to overthrow and drag out the true foundation that has been laid and to cause confusion in the minds of the ones who do believe. But if you have the true love of Allah and the spirit of your forefathers, you fear not what you hear or see, but will sacrifice the utmost of your very life to protect your movement and your prophet. Watch your enemies, dear more. Your enemies are the ones that speak against your prophet and ridicule him to the very lowest, and the ones that speak against your divine and national principles of your temple. Act accordingly, and Allah will bless you for your good work. Peace, your divine prophet, Noble Drew Ali. Prophet warns all Muslims to be read in every meeting. I hereby inform all members they must end all radical speeches while at work, in their home, or on the street. We are for peace and not destruction. Stop flashing your cards to Europeans that cause confusion. Remember, your card is for your salvation. Fair to obey these orders will be a severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, freedom. And when these principles are violated, justice must then take its course. Any member or group of members who hold malicious feelings towards the temple or the prophet or violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their rewards from our lives for their unjust deeds. All true Moors will and must obey the law laid down to them by their prophet. If they lose confidence in their prophet, they should turn in their card and button, cease wearing their turban and feds, and return to the state where I, the prophet, found you. This is a holy and divine movement founded by the prophet, Noble Drew Ali, and the prophet is not right, the temple is not right. Prophet, therefore, send out divine prophecy to all Moorish Americans that do their part in protecting their prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways. Peace, Noble Drew Ali. Islam, Islam, Islam. I just found this through my. Gratitude, Brother Islam. Uh, Sister Lashay L, would you please read our additional laws? Islam, I rise and give all praise to the great Father God Allah. Give honors to the Holy Prophet, Noble Drew Ali. I give honors to Marcus Messiah Garvey, the forerunners of the Prophet. I give honors to each and every Muslim on the call and all Muslims around the world. Questionary and additional laws for the Moorish Americans by the Prophet, Noble Drew Ali. Act 1, Grand Sheiks and Governors and Heads of All Temples, All of Business. Each said temple must be approved by the Prophet, Noble Drew Ali. Before acting upon by any members, let it be finance property or any line of life that will cause the members to sacrifice finance, ETC, that will cause the support of any group of members. Any formal officer that violates these laws is subject to be removed from his office under a heavy restriction, ETC, by the profit or the grant sheet. Act 2. All members are to attend their adept meetings and their public meetings promptly. If a member is found standing around or the meeting period shall be fined 50 cents on the first case. And on the second, he will be fined one dollar, which will go on your emergency fund. If member is working, his monthly dues must be paid, and if he has money in the bank, he must subscribe for as much as he is able to the Morsh uplifting funds because it takes finance to uplift the nation. Act three: well, AD, It is the lawful and divine duty of every good member. Join the meeting. Is able in finance to aid me in saving the nation, and if he does not, he is an enemy to the cause of uplifting his own people. And justice must catch you. Let it be he or she according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, as I have the power invested in my hands, and I would have to enforce the law in order to save the nation. Act four. All members while up making a public speech must not use any assertion against the American flag or speak radical against the church or any member of any organized group, because we're to teach love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Act five. All members must promptly attend their meetings and send their children to Sunday school, and the teacher must confirm himself to the questionnaire. And let every member exercise his five senses who is able to do so, because out from your Sunday school comes the guiders of the nation. Act 6, with us, all members must proclaim their nationality, and we're teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed, that they may know that they are part and parcel of this set government, and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, Black people, or Ethiopians because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 
and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Noble Juwali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Act 7. All members must promptly attend their meetings and become a part and parcel of all uplifting acts of the Moorish Science Temple. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moorish Science Temple. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Jew Ali, through the guidance of his father God, Allah, Islam, peace and love. Islam and gratitude, sister. All right, Morris, um, today we're going to be going over questions, just questions 55 and 56 from the Quran questionnaire, the Morris Science Temple of America. So we just want to focus on those two questions. Uh, we want to look into the spiritual, uh, metaphysical insight in those questions and also draw the practical use from this, right? Because we know that the Quran... Um, questionnaire, the the questions in there are referred to as keys, right? You always hear more say they're keys, the keys, key 56, key 55. These are the keys to the kingdom. So we want to understand what we're dealing with and know how to use them. And that's the main purpose of this. So let's go ahead and get things started. Going in here, uh, question 55. What is the name of of the first physical man. His name cannot be used only by executive rulers of the AC of the MST of A. Question 56, what are the words of AC of the MST of A? ADEP Chamber of the Moorish Science Temple of America. And then in parentheses, it says third heaven. All right. So yeah, without any background in this, no teaching in this, I would assume most people don't even know what it means, what it really is saying. So let's let's go ahead and um and talk about this. <clears throat> uh, we want to know why the Prophet Noble Drew Ali included these questions. Right. Um, what is being implied here, even if, if you don't know a lot, it, you know, if you're just paying attention to it, it's being implied that there's some type of <clears throat> important knowledge is being entrusted to executive rulers and adepts, you know, entrusted to the adepts. OK. And um, we want to know what it's saying, because these aren't just historical accounts. It's not just religious. These are um, instructions that actually hold esoteric wisdom and the, the prophet deemed it essential for our spiritual upliftment. Right. It's more than just trying to understand the human origin and stuff like that. And we want to understand why these are in there, because. These truths are crucial in modern times, maybe even more so now than in 1928, because there's things that are going on now with materialism. It's just increasing. There's more, more um, distractions than ever before, and more people are suffering from spiritual amnesia in our society than ever before. People are so confused that they now don't even have the basics down. People don't even know who they are, right? There's so much confusion and stuff that I guess can't even really speak on here because it'll be seen as inappropriate, right? Maybe you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you don't. But um, there's many reasons why today this stuff is even more is even more important to know. Question 55, the name of the first physical man. <laughs> the name of the first physical man, um, just from a practical point of view, is, um, well, in here, it's, it's, it's implied that it's reserved for people who have went through something, supposed to have gone through something. If people hold true to the prophet's teachings, 
you're not supposed to just be able to be an executive ruler. You should be able to demonstrate some type of wisdom and understanding, right? You're supposed to be able to have gone through some actual spiritual initiations in the ADEP chamber. So this is emphasizing or um, this is letting it be known that there are some spiritual truths that have to be preserved and they can only be shared with people who understand and who know how to use them responsibly, right? Implying this, there's some type of power in this understanding. And um, from a you know metaphysical point of view, if you look in the, um, in the Charles Fillmore Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, the name of the first physical man is supposed to represent the archetype of human consciousness. It's, it's supposed to represent the one that emerges from the divine source into material existence. So the first man embodies the divine spirit. What is the divine spirit? I mean, well, I just said it. I, was, I meant to say embodies divine breath. But divine breath is spirit housed in flesh. All right? And the first man embodies this. It's the initiation of humanity's spiritual journey. And um, it's also, you know, symbol, symbol, symbolic of um, being kind of innocent, being connected to the creator, not being, not feeling separated from spirit, being one with spirit in the garden of Eden. Um, and we spoke about this last week, the garden of Eden symbolizes a state of consciousness, I'm not saying that there's not a place on earth. Potentially they could be called a garden of Eden or gardens of Eden. I'm not saying that there's, but we're not worried about that because in actuality, the garden of Eden is a state of consciousness and it's, it's an awareness that's unblemished, right? Divine unity before the descent, the descent into what? It's in chapter one in our Holy Quran, the creation and fall of man. So this is before the descent, the fall of man before the, illusions of separation and materiality right the material world where all you are is this body right all you are is this this meat body right so it's an unblemished awareness of divine unity and it's a sacred space speaking about the garden of eden a sacred space of pure potential right this is where the human consciousness connects directly to the divine and so when, when Adam and Eve are kicked out of the Garden of Eden, this isn't even talking about being kicked out of a place. Not saying that things like that didn't happen, but it doesn't matter. Not talking about being kicked out of a place. You can't come here anymore. It's all about the consciousness. So it's like, okay, you're no longer conscious of your true nature now. It's not about being kicked out of a place. All right? And so this is important to remember, too, because that Garden of Eden, that's in each and every one of us. Right. We, we also spoke about Mecca. Right. When you look at the Holy Quran of Mecca, when it speaks about Mecca, because what, what did it say? What is the modern name for the Garden of Eden? Question 54 from last week. Mecca. Right. So they're synonymous, one and the same. And then when we look in the Quran, all right, in the Quran of Mecca, um. Mecca is spoken of as this, this place where we're, we're working to subdue our lower self. Not, excuse me, not working to subdue our lower self, but working to, we're, we're making a pilgrimage to something, right? We're doing the work to return to, some, to a certain state. This is what's, you know, this is what is one of the things it's symbolic of. And so we, as Moorish American Muslims, we want to do that on a regular basis. Right. This pilgrimage to Mecca. Right. Returning to the state. This is a way of life for us. We're supposed to always be doing this work. So that means every day we're we're doing the work to make sure that we're we're praying. Right. Why are we praying to return to the truth, return to art, return to the source, strengthen our connection with spirit. So that's important to keep in mind for us. We need to understand this because these are divine instructions for us. We're supposed to be praying throughout the day. Prayer, meditation. 
right? We're supposed to be doing that work to strengthen our connection to source. All right. And so, you know, we want to understand this because these aren't just spiritual symbols and things like that. If we're not putting this into practical use, it means nothing. So as as a Moorish American Muslim, you should understand this. OK, Garden of Eden, Mecca and all this stuff, you know, this this key letting us know that a uh, key 54 that Mecca basically is the modern name for the Garden of Eden. We understand Mecca is, you know, where divine communion takes place. Millions of people gather in submission and unity to Allah. So we understand, hey, we 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 supposed to do this on a regular basis. It's not even so much about going to a place. All right. This is what we do on a regular basis because Mecca is, is a place of spiritual pilgrimage and purification. Right. So it's like, yeah, maybe we should be embracing the five prayers, making sure that we're praying, it, you know, at least, you know, a certain amount of times a day and doing it you know, to discipline ourselves, to make sure that we are connected to spirit. <clears throat> Maybe just setting aside a couple times a day to get away from the distractions and things that we have to deal with to get to connect to source. All right. Just wanted to hit on that real quick, you know, just to make sure that's understood. All right. We're still talking about questions 55 through 56. But that's important because this is talking about the first man. And so all this is in divine order, right? But we want to know what that really means, like for us. So it has impact for each and every one of us um, on a personal level, because these are all talking about things that occur within us. When we look at uh, question 56 regarding the ADEP chamber of the Morris Science Temple of America, the ADEP chamber is also called third heaven here. Right. And it's symbolizing potentially a higher state of consciousness that all eight of should be aspiring to reach. It's not merely just a physical place or a, a concept for an organization. It's supposed to actually um, symbolize a spiritual reality. Right. And that's important because this is supposed to be for people that actually experience divine illumination or unity with divine will, with divine mind, right? So this third heaven is supposed to, um, it's supposed to actually be about the transformation of the lower earthly self into what? Into our divine heavenly self, all right? And that's the ultimate state for spiritual realization because that's when we're transcending the limitations of material consciousness and beginning to embody divine attributes. So, you know, on, you know, these instructions are actually for all of us, right? This is something that we all want to aspire to, which is why we, you know, always throw in there meditation, you know, prayer throughout the day, because we want to reflect on our lives, you know, how, what we're doing, what progress we're making and make sure that we're, we're being spiritually disciplined to make sure that we're, we're working to connect to our source on a regular basis. We're never falling off. All right. Now, remember the prophet said the truth shall make us free. And this is why no matter what we're doing, it always comes back to source, right? Because the spiritual truths, are the only thing that really have the power to liberate us. And what are we being liberated from? From the bondage of ignorance, materialism, and lower self-desires. That's what keeps us stuck. That's always the root of our issues. So the truth helps us to reconnect with our divine essence, right, with our, with our source. And in doing this, that brings clarity, that brings purpose, all right? And so that's how come even a hundred years later, these truths brought by the Prophet Noble Drew Ali is still, it's still important. It's still guiding us, you know, guiding us towards self-knowledge, national pride. The Prophet had to include that in there as we didn't even know who we are, were, and the spiritual integrity, right? Teaching us of our divine heritage and our duty to uplift fallen humanity. It's like, okay, 
on one level yet you know at a, on a human level we do have an origin we do come from a great people but also the truth right who is our truth who is our father actually the creator allah and allah is in each and every one of us right so um now going through these keys and why we break them down and only going over a few at a time is we want to understand what it really means they're keys so that means we need to put them into use make sure that we're putting them into use to actually uplift ourselves right we can't leave that part out you know so just um wrapping this up you know on on these just these two questions right now the name of the first physical man, right, saying that his name cannot be used only by executive rulers of the AC or the MSTA. Um, this is, you know, just making it plain that, that the first physical man's name is only reserved for the executive rulers. It's sacred knowledge. It's not to be spoken lightly, right, because it represents the divine mystery of human origins. And so by understanding why why that name is held in such reverence. Now we're reminded that spiritual knowledge carries a responsibility. It must be guarded. It has to be respected, right? Just like a divine trust would be. So now we, we, we have to understand it. This isn't, you know, just a game to play around with as Moorish Americans. We actually have, we actually have some type of power. We actually do have some type of understanding and our own knowledge that we must protect. We're not just Negroes out here anymore because Negroes, niggas, whatever they're called, don't really have anything. They don't even have their own culture, their own knowledge, their own understanding. They don't have their own language. They don't have nothing. We have a lot. We even have sacred knowledge that must be protected. It's not just for anyone, right? Because there's some people, you know, they want to let everyone in the club. Oh, bring them all in here. Yeah, everybody can come in here. Oh, you want to be there? Okay, you could be this. All you have to do is be my friend and I'll make you the... No, it doesn't work like that over here. That's how it works in Negro world. Y'all do whatever y'all want over there. But over here in the Morris Science Temple of America, it's not anything goes. And you don't have to like it. We do have something that's sacred that we have to hold sacred. We do have something to protect. And it's not, you know, it's not just because of empty words, right? We're saying this is sacred, so we're acting like it's sacred. No, this is for real. Now, in order for us to know that this sacredness, that this really has to be protected, that this actually is real, we have to do the work. We actually do have to do the work as far as meditating and connecting to our higher self so we all know this is real that's another reason why it's not good enough to just oh i'm a member i don't attend i don't i show up every now and then we actually do need to hold to this be at our meetings and actually on the side doing the work spiritually to connect to higher self to know that this is real once you make that connection even just once you know this is real, and you know that there are things that we do hold sacred for a reason. Now, from a metaphysical perspective, the first physical man, that's not just, you know, some historical, it's not just some, some anthropological figure, right? He represents the Adam Kadmon, right? Adam Kadmon, that's the archetype of the original spiritual human being, okay? And, um... You know, it's a, it's an archetype. It embodies both the divine and the physical. All right. When you're really looking at that, the first physical man symbolizes the logos, right, which is the divine word or the wisdom that takes on flesh. When we look in the, the metaphysical Bible dictionary, Adam represents the awakened state of spiritual consciousness that descends into the physical realm. The awakened state of physical consciousness right fully connected to the creator this is why when you read the scriptures it's got adam walking around right in the garden of eden talking to allah talking to the creator consciously
So this is um, awakened state of spiritual consciousness descending into the physical realm. So this physical body of the first man is actually a vessel of divine light, right? And it's spiritually conscious. And then that knowledge, it connects us to the understanding that our flesh houses a divine spark. And it reminds us that our human form isn't separate from the divine, but it's a physical manifestation of it. Remember, man is neither the body nor the soul. He's spirit and one with the law. So there was a state in time where we were conscious of that. And that's why in question 57, who were Adam and Eve? And it says they are the mothers and fathers, right? Plural of the human family, Asiatics and Muslims. And so that's why it don't matter what anyone else says. If you hear people talking like, oh, we don't come from Adam and Eve or saying that Adam and Eve is just these certain people, man. Look, they're coming at it from a very dumb down point of view. We're talking about spiritual and the truth. That's why when it says Adam and Eve here, it's got plural mothers with an S on it and fathers with an S on it. This is letting it be known that our ancestors didn't have a lower self at first. They came about later on. That doesn't mean that the physical body didn't have the carnal mind. But it wasn't the lower self yet, because if it existed, it was just there as a servant. It just served this purpose. It has a purpose, right? The carnal mind has a purpose. The body's consciousness does have a purpose. It does have a reason for existing. But in chapter one, when it get, tells you about the creation and fall of man, lets it be known that it soon became a foe that we must subdue, that we must overcome to be the strength of Allah may manifest, right? That eventually we would fall asleep and forget who we are. Forget that we're a lie incarnated in the flesh. And then we would eventually realize this and then begin to serve our purpose, begin to actually subdue that carnal self and set things right again. Okay? But there was a point in time, yeah, they didn't have a lower self. There was no foe who was, you know, where, where they were just all body. Just, well, I'm this physical body. No, they knew who they were. They knew that they were everywhere all at once, but experiencing life as this individual person. There was no separation, you know, no fear, none of those things. These are all new things that happened once we forgot who we were. That's the truth. That's the divine truth. Okay? And so now with this understanding that, that the prophet brought back to us, now we're doing the work to subdue the carnal self, to put the lower self back in its proper place. Right? Get back, beast. You're supposed to be taking orders. You're supposed to be, you know, you do your job, right? You keep the heart pumping and stuff like that. We don't knock the lower self, you know, the, the understanding that, that it has is needed. But that's the job it's supposed to do. It's not supposed to be you know, hey, I want to taste this. I want to do that. I want to, because when we follow those things, it always leads to death, destruction, decay. It's not a good boss, right? And so um, this is what all this is about. <clears throat> Everything in here. Keys for us to use to realize our true purpose and return to our true state. So that, that Garden of Eden, remember, was it's a state of consciousness we're not worried about a place on earth because you know, wherever you are, the Garden of Eden is there because it's a state of consciousness where, where human, humanity originally dwelled, where it was in perfect unity with divine. So whenever we're connected to our higher self, that's the Garden of Eden, pure awareness of God's presence. So before the fall, man and woman lived in a state of unbroken communion with the source. And in this state, it would have been characterized by innocence, divine knowledge, and, and spiritual clarity. So there's no confusion. It's nothing like this world that we're in now. Right? But we've gone through all these trials and tribulations now so that we can set things straight. So, you know, today, 
yes, this is relevant today because many people, probably most humans, struggle with the illusion of separation from God. And in that illusion of separation, that creates spiritual and emotional suffering. But by understanding the Garden of Eden is actually a consciousness. Now we are all able to understand that returning to this paradise, it means not going to some place on the world or, you know, in some point in time. No, that means regaining our awareness, right? Divine unity. That's what we want. So you see the hand clasp of unity. We want that in ourselves. Each and every one of us want that within ourselves. Unity with our higher self. Unity with the law. We want to raise our thoughts up to divine wisdom. So this is something for each and every last one of us to do. It's even, you know, more important than worrying about unifying with others and we're not even unified with self. Okay? Um, and so, this, you know, that's work for each and every one of us to do. When we look in the Quran, we always speak about Surah 2, Ayat 30. We're looking at Surah 2, um, Ayat 30 through 34 in the Holy Quran of Mecca. Allah declared that he would place a representative on earth. And this being would act with divine responsibility. And that's why he made man his Khalifa on earth. And that's the purpose that's the sanctity of our position. This is a divine trust that was entrusted to us, to humans, to be Allah's Khalifa on earth, his representative, his earthly representative. And that's why, once again, no, the name of the first physical man, it can't be used by everyone. It ain't for you if you're not doing the work to subdue your lower self. It ain't for, it, it, it's, it has to be held by Moorish American Muslims, and we have to hold to it for real. This is not for everybody. It's only for those who are not slaves to sin. All right? Because we have a responsibility. We have to be disciplined spiritually. And everybody's not up for that. The ADEP chamber of the Moorish Science Temple of America, Third Heaven, this also represented an elevated state of mind, of spiritual attainment, right? And it's only for those who have purified themselves in thought, word, and deed. Those are the only ones that can enter. So even if there's more Americans out there who are being sloppy, who aren't doing the work that they're supposed to do, who just, oh, just anybody can come in here. Let's, you know, let's just open it up for everyone. None of them will ever enter third heaven. It's just meaningless, empty words for them. If they're not doing the work to purify themselves spiritually, it don't matter what they say. None of them can enter heaven. Why? Because Satan can't enter heaven. Heaven. It's the lower self. It's falsehood manifest. Right? So, you know, this really is only for those who are, are ready to do the work to to exalt our mind to divine wisdom, right? And in doing that, you know, earthly limitations and material illusions no longer dominate us, right? So this is only for those who want to rise above fear, anger, you know, attachment, but want to embody divine love, wisdom, and strength. So, you know, once again, it's, it's not even something that, can truly be corrupted. You can't enter third heaven because it's actually not a place. It's not some organizational thing. It goes beyond that. If Morris think that's what it is, they ain't in there either. It's actually a state of consciousness. Right? It's connected directly with the divine mind. And so this is what, you know, this is the truth that shall make us free. In doing this work, to attain to um to raise our thoughts up to divine wisdom right because this this third heaven is supposed to be a place of spiritual transformation where people aren't bound to earthly constraints so if people aren't doing that work it, it don't matter what they say 
you know you they they farther from third heaven than you are from Timbuktu or or China or something like that right it doesn't matter what people say we have to actually do the work internally all right and so the prophet returns something to us that truly is divine right for us to do the work individually to return to our spiritual roots and then to begin to build a society off of that. And in doing this, by default, we will be uplifting fallen humanity through our words, deeds, works, deeds, and actions. <coughs> and so <coughs> just to um to share some advice for us all. <coughs> probably gonna say this in every class, but um we want to begin to start meditating if we're not already doing that. <clears throat> meditating and praying. Every Moorish American Muslim should at least, at very least, be meditating when you wake up. Maybe when you wake up and when you go to bed. <clears throat> and then begin to start doing it more even throughout the day. All right? Just at a basic level, you know? Just starting off. If you're not doing it already, get to work. There's nothing. There's no faking it. You can't fake it. Can't pretend you're doing it. You know, it's not even about proving ourselves to anyone, but just to actually begin to do this work. So these aren't just empty words for us, right? And on that note, though, Morris, I'm gonna go ahead and yield the floor. Um, <clears throat> if there are any questions or comments, please feel free to speak. And on that note, Morris, I yield the floor. Islam. Islam. Islam, brother, feel free to speak. All right, so my highest heights giving all perfect praises to our Father God of Law. Honest to Prophet Noble Jura Ali. Honest to you, Grand Sheik. Honest to the members of the Morris Science Temple of America. Islamism. Um, question. As it talks about the third heaven in um number 56, my question is. What's the any do we have any demonstrations on the first and second heaven? Idealistically, it states that if you're stating that it's the third heaven, it's a state of consciousness, what would the second and first heaven um reference to Islamism? Islam. <clears throat> Islam. Can you hear me? Islam, okay. clear. Islam. Okay, Islam. So, yeah, just looking at it, um, looking in the scriptures, like in the Bibles, um, I think in Corinthians it talks about the different levels of heaven. Um, the third heaven is supposed to be the realm of the creator. I don't know much about the other levels, so I can't really speak about it. But I know the third, you know, the third realm, for the most part, is spoken about being, you know, uh, one with the creator. So that could be speaking about the spiritual realm. <clears throat> You know, but um, I, I can't really speak too much about the first and second heaven. Now, for That's us, awesome. for us, though, with that understanding of the third heaven, third heaven being the realm of, of, of Allah or the, the creator, um, it would make sense if that is spirit. Because, you know, ultimately, that's what we're doing the work to connect to. Um, and then spirit, you know, doesn't matter where you're at in the world, 
you know, underwater on another world, wouldn't matter where you're at, you know, spirit is when you're consciously connected to all. There is no separation at all. You know, it's, it's a totally illuminated state where you actually feel everything in, in, in um, you feel everything in creation. It's kind of indescribable, too, because, you know, it's hard to explain that, really. Well, it's hard for me to explain that, really. But it's where you're, you're consciously aware of everything, are, are connected to everything. <clears throat> and also know that the answers, whatever you need, is there. You can, you can, you don't have to go outside of self to get it. But, um, you know, that's, that's my understanding. Islam. All right. Islam, there, thank you. Oh, gratitude, brother. Are there any other questions or comments? Islam. 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 First, I want to rise, give praise to Allah, honor to his prophet, Noble Drali, honor to all the true divine prophets, honor to the forerunner, Marcus Messiah Garvey, honor to everybody on the call, and honor to everything that's Moorish. Um, I have a question, uh, Camel, back in uh, uh, my brother question. Um, if it like since it's like first, second, and third heaven, do we have to go through all of the? Do we have to go through first and second heaven to get to third heaven? Islam. Islam. Now that's a good question. Um, you know, from my understanding, I believe that's what we're going through now, and that's because when you're looking in in the, just looking in the scriptures. The way things are described, like in the Bible, it's like first heaven maybe is the earth or, you know, the, the the earth realm. And then I think like second heaven might be like the stars. And that's just one way of looking at it. But, you know, if that's if if that is um the same understanding that the prophet is coming from, you know, with the Holy Quran and the um, Quran questionnaire, then. um. It means we're going through that already. I mean, this this physical manifestation that we're going through is still a spiritual journey. So we're going through this to to come to an understanding. This is all being done for a reason. So it's like we're going to that, and that's why it just skips straight to third heaven. You know, okay, we fell out of touch with spirit, so we have to go through all these different stuff, this physical manifestation, just to come back to the source. Islam. 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 I have a, I have an additional question if if I can ask Islam. Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Now looking at this, maybe maybe this will give me a better understanding as well. Um, it's speaking about the adept chamber at the Morris Science Temple of America being third heaven or signifying third heaven within it, as in the concept. What is the um what is the purpose of the ad that chamber or the more science temple of america and its functions if it can be spoken of islam yeah just a general understanding which i think should hold weight for you know for most Moorish americans across the nation it should be a way you know ideally of ensuring that those who are um involved in the governing of our affairs are spiritually disciplined people. And that should increase the level of trust that we can have with each other. And so that when there's, you know, in our government, in our, you know, nation, if we hold to it and do it as the prophet intended, you know, we wouldn't have the problems that, that we see in the, in the world where, you know, the, because when, when you come in, you know, as an ADEP, you're starting to come into the government, actually come in, you know, 
and, you know, be active, maybe even be a representative. And so if we do that right, we wouldn't have the issues that everyone else has in the world. But the more is going to have to be spiritually disciplined and hold to it in order for it to work. We can't be hard headed, you know. And so that means we still got a lot of work to do. Right. Because, you know, the up, you know, ideally would be someone who's serious about this, you know, the, the task of uplifting fallen humanity. A lot of us aren't really serious about that. And there's no knock to anyone. But it's just like, OK, if we held to it, this would do away with the earthly problems. We will, we will begin to build something greater than we've ever seen before. Islam. Islam. First and foremost, I'd like to rise and give praise to our Father God, Allah, honors to Prophet Noble Jali, honors to the first appointed Supreme Grand Sheikh, Brother Ibn Ali, honors to the forerunner Prophet Marcus Mosiah Garvey, honors to everything more and everybody on the call. Um, I just wanted to add, um, if we go back and look at um, Prophet Jesus when he was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, um, he had to overcome the lower self and and that's really what the chambers is about it's it's a ceremonial uh rite of passage if you will where you are you know um you're going through something to be reborn if that makes sense and so in that new birth you're supposed to come out cleansed right you come out cleansed and you know you're reborn as a Moorish American Muslim through and through, tried and true Islam. And you're ready to do the work of our Father God Allah through our wills and our ways, the ill and days, Islam. So if that brings any more clarity, I yield the floor. Islam, gratitude. Islam, that was perfect. I really appreciate that. That brings all the clarity that I needed. Islamism. Islam. And so the prophet gave us the blueprint. But in order to make it work, we have to come in and take it seriously. And um, if you feel called to do this work at all, you should come in all the way. And begin to do the work on yourself to spiritually, you know, to purify yourself. We all should. You shouldn't think that someone else is going to do it. Or that someone better than you is going to come along and do it. Shouldn't feel like that at all. Right? If you have the call, that means you're one of the ones that's going to get it done. You know? And um, in order for the chamber or anything else that the prophet established to work, though, we have to come in and work it properly. And, um, you know, I've experienced and seen what it's like when Moors aren't doing it properly. And only because, you know, that's just how we are as a people, period. Everyone in the world, almost everybody's, you know, has this issue of their lower self to deal with. So if we, the, the Moorish Americans are going to, you know, do something about it, I don't know if anyone else is at all. You know, so we, we have to come in and work it and make it. You know, and remove the corruption and all of those things that come from being slaves to our own lower self. Islam. But, um, you know, he gave us everything that we need to be successful and prosperous. Um, if there's any other questions or comments, though, please feel free to speak. I yield the floor. Okay, looks like there's no more questions or comments. I want to announce without further ado, we're going to go into the closing of the meeting. Uh, don't go anywhere more as we're about to read our divine warning.
a divine warning by the prophet for the nations. The citizens of all free national governments, according to their national constitution, are all of one family bearing one free national name. Those who fail to recognize the free national name of their constitutional government are classed as undesirables and are subject to all inferior names and abuses and mistreatments that the citizens care to bestow upon them. And it is a sin for any group of people to violate the national constitutional laws of a free national government and cling to the names and the principles that delude to slavery. I, the prophet, was prepared by the great God Allah to warn my people to repent from their sinful ways and go back to the state of mind, to their forefathers' divine and national principles, that they will be law abiders and receive their divine right as citizens according to the free national constitution that was prepared for all free national beings. They are to claim their own free national name and religion. There is but one issue for them to be recognized by this government and of the earth, and it comes only through the connection of the Moorish Divine National Movement, which is incorporated in this government and recognized by all other nations of the world. And through it, they and their children can receive their divine rights, unmolested by other citizens, that they can cast a free national ballot at the polls under the free national constitution of the state's government, and not under a granted privilege, as has been the existing condition for many generations. You who doubt whether I, the prophet, and my principles are right for the redemption of my people, go to those that know the law, in the city hall, and among the officials in your government, and ask them under an intelligent tone, and they will be glad to render you a favorable reply. For they are glad to see me bring you out of darkness into light. Money doesn't make the man. It is free national standards and power that makes a man and a nation. The wealth of all national governments, gold and silver and commerce, belong to the citizens alone. And without your national citizenship, by name and principles, you have no true wealth. And I am hereby calling on all true citizens that stand for a national free government and the enforcement of the Constitution to help me in my great missionary work because I need all support from all true American citizens of the United States of America. Help me to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of the government. I am depending on your support to get them back to the constitutional fold again, that they will learn to love instead of hate and will live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, supporting our free national constitution of the United States of America. I love my people and I desire their unity and mine back to their own free national and divine standard because day by day they have been violating the national and constitutional laws of their government by claiming names and principles that are unconstitutional. If Italians, Greeks, English, Chinese, Japanese, Turks, and Arabians are forced to proclaim their free national name and religion before the constitutional government of the United States of America it is no more than right that the law should be enforced upon all other American citizens alike. In all other governments, when a man is born and raised there and asks for his national descent name, and if he fails to give it, he is misused, imprisoned, or exiled. Any group of people that fail to answer up to the constitutional standards of law by name and principles, because to be a citizen of any government, you must claim your national descent name, because they place their trust upon issue and names formed by their forefathers. The word Negro deludes in the Latin language to the word nigger. The same as the word colored deludes to anything that is painted, varnished, and dyed. And every nation must bear a national descent name of their forefathers, because honoring thy fathers and thy mothers, your days will be lengthened upon this earth. These names have never been recognized by any true American citizens of this day. Through your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth that are recognized by said national government in which they live. The 14th and 15th Amendments brought the North and South in unit, placing the Southerners, who were at that time without power, with 
the constitutional body of power. And at that time, 1865, the free national constitutional law that was enforced since 1774 declared all men equal and free. And if all men are declared by the free national constitution to be free and equal, since that constitution has never been changed, there is no need for the application of the 14th and 15th amendments for the salvation of our people and citizens. So there isn't but one supreme issue for my people to use to redeem that which was lost. And that is through the above statements. Then the lion and the lamb can lie down together in yonder hills and neither will be harmed because love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice will be reigning in this land. In those days, the United States will be one of the greatest civilized and prosperous governments of the world. But if the above principles are not carried out by the citizens and my people in this government, the worst is yet to come. Because the great God of the universe is not pleased with the works that are being performed in North America by my people, and this great sin must be removed from the land to save it from enormous earthquakes, disease, ETC. And I, the prophet, do hear and believe that this administration of the government, being more wisely prepared by more genius citizens that believe in their free national constitution and laws, and through the help of such classes of citizens, I, the prophet, truly believe that my people will find the true and divine way of their forefathers and learn to stop serving carnal customs and merely ideas of man that have never done them any good but have always harmed them. So I, the prophet, am hereby calling aloud with a divine plea to all true American citizens to help me to remove this great sin which has been committed and is being practiced by my people in the United States of America because they know it is not the true and divine way and without understanding they have fallen from the true light into utter darkness of sin. And there is not a nation on earth today that will recognize them socially, religiously, politically, or economically ETC in their present condition of their endeavorment in which they themselves try to force upon a civilized world. They will not refrain from their sinful ways of action and their deeds have brought Jim Crowism, segregation, and everything that brings harm to human beings on earth. And they fought the Southerner for all these great misuses, but I have traveled in the South and have examined conditions there, and it is the works of my people continuously practicing the things which bring dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect to any nation that lives the life. And I am hereby calling on all true American citizens for moral support and finance to help me in my great missionary work to bring my people out of darkness into marvelous light. From the Prophet. right islam everybody um before we close out just want to give everyone a reminder we will be having a celebration on january 5th for the prophet noble drew ali that will be at the reynoldsburg library i believe from two to four and then before we close out i want to put the call out there for those who are inspired to assist us in the great work of uplifting fallen humanity, please send a donation to our temple. You can always go to MoorishAmericans.com and on there just scroll down to the bottom and use that donate button to send a donation to the temple. For those who are who would like to join and proclaim your nationality, click the contact button on the same website. And then use either the phone number on there to call us or fill out that contact form. All right, and in light of that, we're going to go ahead and close things out. All meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the Circle 7 in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. I want to ask everyone present to please rise and face the east as I recite the closing prayer. You do not need to repeat after me. Right, standing facing the east with our heels together, feet at a 45 degree angle, holding up two fingers on the right, and five on the left. Allah, bind our hearts and minds back to our ancient forefathers, divine creed and principles. We ask this in thy holy name and the seven Elohim. Amen. Islam, peace and love, boys. This meeting is now adjourned.
Islam, peace and love. Islam, peace and love. Islam, peace and love. Islam, peace and love. Peace and love. Islam, peace and love.